Good morning. morning. So good to see everyone here today. My name is Keith Cox, and I'm the lead pastor here, and we want to welcome you and your family, especially those who are watching um, in their homes. There are some watching uh, with our live stream, and then some are watching with us right now, and some will be watching later during the week as well. So it's just such a joy uh, to have you and your family with us uh, today. What a joy to have you. Now, if this is your very first time, uh, we would encourage you uh, to fill out the Connect card. In your bulletin, inside your bulletin, um, there's a Connect card. So if you're a first-time guest, please fill that out. And then at the end of the service, Christy will meet you over here at the Welcome Center. Uh, she will take your information and give you some more information and a free gift from the church. Or if you have to rush out and you don't have time, you can place that Connect card in the offering plate. So if you're new, now we have some new faces here today. We have some returning faces. We have faces we haven't seen in a while. So as you know, we're considered a very friendly church, wouldn't y'all say? And so you have a responsibility to find these new faces, tell them that you're so glad they're here. I'd rather you walk up to someone and say, hey, is this your first time? They say, no, we've been a member for 20 years. That's okay. <laughs> I, I'd rather you Go up to them and introduce yourself and, just so, and just tell them that you're so glad and thankful that they're here today. Also, we have a large pew pad. Emily, stand up and show everyone this large pew pad. So, that's right. And so if you haven't met Emily, <laughs> Emily is our children's director. Now watch this. Rich, you got one back there on yours? Stand up. So people in the back, if you haven't met Rich, he's our new youth director. He has a large pad too. So... You take it and you fill it out and you pass it to your left or right. Nick, you don't have a pew pad up there that you do, so we'll meet Nick later. Um, but fill those pew pads out, sign it. And what it does is it allows you to say, oh, I've been sent by this person for 20 years. And I don't even know their name. And then you can figure out who they are. And so uh, please fill that out as well. Now, Sundays are very important. Um, this is our time where on Sunday mornings where you get to hear amazing music from the bells to the choir to the organ, the piano. Hopefully you hear a decent sermon. That's our goal. The music, you know, the music is a little here. The message, you know, we're trying to, trying to do well on uh, Sunday mornings. Uh, so Sunday mornings are, are important, but Wednesday is also a time of discipleship. So we want you here on Sundays, but we want you to come back on Wednesdays. Um, there's a meal we have every week at 515. If you're new, if you show up for the very first time, you get a free meal. On the back of that Connect card, you need to make a reservation, place it in the offering plate, or let, I'll contact the church office by noon on Monday. And then we have also ministry opportunity for our children, youth, and adults. So our youth meet at 6 uh, p.m. every Wednesday. And we also have a grief share class that meets at 6. And then our children meet at 6.15. And our adult discipleship meet at 6.15. So we want you to come back on Wednesday nights to be part of our discipleship ministry here at the church. And then we also offer different things throughout the week. For example, tomorrow at 11.30, our older adults are having a luncheon, and I just found out we have 12 more spaces. So if you are free tomorrow from 11.30 to about 1, 1.30, and would like to have a fantastic meal, we have enough 12 spaces left. So plan to be at our fellowship hall. This is called our older adult ministry, OWLS, which is Older, Wiser, Livier Saints. So, owls. Hoo hoo. So, anyway, so uh, we encourage you to be a part of that tomorrow at 1130. If you have a teenager, we have a breakfast every Tuesday at 645. Um, I was actually at this past one. We had 14 teenagers. It was a great turnout. We've got great parents. We've got great church members who volunteer. Scooter's still driving that bus. Excellent job. And so, uh, we need more people to be involved. But if you have a teenager, bring them at 645 on Tuesday for a great um, breakfast. Now, if I say the word s'mores, who knows what is a s'more? Who likes s'mores? Who wants more s'mores? <laughs> okay, so next Sunday night, a week from the night, this is a church-wide event. Not just children, not just youth, not, it's church-wide. We want every age and stage of life. We're gonna meet on the ball field. We're gonna have s'mores, which is graham crackers, Hershey chocolate and uh, marshmallows. I want to see how many of y'all burn your marshmallows. That's going to be fun. It's a very sticky event, but it's a great event. 
We're going to have s'mores and music. It's going to be s'mores and songs. Starts at 6 p.m. If you can make it, just let us know by Friday. Contact the office. Contact Emily. Email Emily. That way we know exactly how many marshmallows and to provide. But we also need something. We need firewood. Because, you know, if you don't have a fire, you can't make s'mores. So if you'd like to volunteer some firewood, uh, let us know. So we can, we're going to have a four or five fire pit set up and have a great time of making s'mores. Bring your own lawn chairs. Uh, dress warm. It's going to be a, it'll be a great event. We've never done it before. And so, and I'm not planning it, so it won't rain. So, yeah, I say that because every time I plan an event, it rains outside. So I, I'm not in charge, so the weather should be fine. Now, there's other announcements in your, in your bulletin. Please read those throughout the week so you can be involved in all that we do. A lot is happening in the life of our church, so we want you to be involved in, in many, many ways. And then there's one additional prayer concern that I want to share now that, that's not in your bulletin. One of our members, uh, Ken Iosi, Ken's brother, passed away this week. So we want to remember Ken and Miriam in our prayers. Now we will continue to worship with our prelude a morning song from our joy bell. Our scripture this morning comes from 1 Samuel 17, verse 40. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in his pouch of the shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. 
We thank you for the opportunity that we can come together and to worship you. Lord, our one desire at this time is to truly honor and worship you throughout this service. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would allow your Holy Spirit uh, to fall fresh. Lord, I realize that over the past week that there's things that we've been going through in our lives that can be uh, a distraction or, dis or concerns, things that we're dealing with with our families and jobs and finances, and it's, it's so easy to focus on that and, and not to give you our full attention. So my prayer for myself and for everyone else here is that we will not worry about things of the past week or worry about things we have to do in the days to come, but let's just enjoy this time. Because the reality is we will never get this hour again. So let's use this time to worship you, to draw closer to you. We ask that you will speak to us in a new way. Give us ears to listen. Give us minds to understand. Give us a heart of compassion and love that we may feel your spirit. Lord, we desire to be a church of one heart, one mind, and one voice. And one way that we do that every week is to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you would all please stand, turn in your hymnal to page 810. Our call to worship this morning will be Psalm 91. That is Psalm 91. This psalm is also known as the Soldier's Psalm. As we are here to uh, celebrate and honor those men and women who have who have served the, those uh, veterans today. This is a great call of worship for all of us. Psalm 91, which is known as the Soldier's Psalm, page 810. Join me together as we have this call to worship. Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For the Lord will deliver you from the snare of uh, the fowler and from the daily pestilence and will cover you with his pinions. Under the Lord's wings you will find refuge. God's faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness nor the destruction that wastes in need. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you. For only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your habitation. No evil shall befall you, nor skies will come near your tent. For God will give you his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up on their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone, you will tread on the lion and the eye. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because they cleave to me in love, I will deliver them. I will protect them because they know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will satisfy with them with a long life and show them my salvation. If you remain standing, turn to number 698 as we sing God of the Ages.
if all our children would come to the front row. Uh, this is what's known as our mystery box. This is our children's moments. And so, come on. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Come on down. All right. What a great group of little ones. Great group. So before we open up this box, why don't you sit here you go. Let me explain, because we have some new people here, so let me explain what is a mystery box and what's the purpose of a mystery box. Hope I didn't break that. So, so if you're new, let me explain. Our children are very important to us. Okay, we need you here every week. So you have to wake up every Sunday about 5 a.m., wake up your parents, wake up your grandparents, and get them ready for church. Okay, and that's what you do. So you have permission to do that every Sunday. Okay. So the children come, and so we have this time known as a mystery box. So we take turns. They send this box home. They can put anything they want in the box. So it has to have three rules. Cannot be alive. Cannot once been alive. And a parent or grandparent must know what's in the box. So do you know. Because we don't want to embarrass anybody. Now, when I open up the box, it's my responsibility to connect whatever's in this box to the Bible, what it means to be a follower of Christ. See, most people come to our church not for the sermon, but for the mystery box. Uh-oh. So here we go. You ready? Who put it? Who, who did this? You did it? All right. Let's see what's in it. I did too. You did it. All right. Let's, let's see what we got. Ooh, all right. We got two items. We have... So the army men and then the cow. That's yours. Let me show everybody else. So we have a cow. And the cows go. They don't go roof, roof. Okay. So here's a cow. And here's the army man, the soldier. I'm going to hold on this one for a second. Marie. Right, and you, you did great. So I'm, I'm going to say this for a second. I got to figure out what we're going to talk about the cow. Let me think. Cow. Cow. Let me think. See, what did I have for supper last night? No, we're going to talk about supper last night. <laughs> Steak. No, that'd be terrible. So, so, <laughs> that'd be horrible. So, that'd be horrible. All right, so, so, how, has anybody, what kind of cow is this? Is this like, is this like a dairy cow? It's a baby cow. Baby cow. All right, so listen, let, let's, let's have fun with the adults right quick, okay? Let's, let's, let's have fun. I'm going to say something to these adults, and I'm going to get them to do something and see if they copy. So I want the adults, I want you to say the word silk three times real fast. Ready? Go. Silk, silk, silk. What do cows drink? Milk, milk, milk. Not milk. They drink water. <laughs> we got them. Cows drink, well... Baby cow, baby cows. Okay, see, they said cows don't drink milk; they drink water, right? So we got them. That was good. So first of all, I'm going to use little cow just to have fun with our adults, because laughter is important. And uh, one of my favorite pictures in my office is a picture of Jesus smiling. And so, I know. And so, right here, see this table right here? This is called a table of bounty. It means that we're very thankful. And so this is a time that we need to give thanks for everything, for family and friends and for laughter. So you, you let me tell a joke with the cow. So you did good. So you hold the cow back. You want the cow back? All right. Now this is going to be special too because today is Veterans Day. In a few moments, we're going to invite all the men and women who have served. And up here, we have all the different military branches from the Air Force, Army, Coast Guard, Marines, and Navy. And I even have a little coin God, we're going to give them to say thank you. And so this is a great reminder because there's a lot of men and women and some of your moms and dads and grandparents and family have gone and served in the military, and it's important that we stop and say thank you. So this was good. Both of them were great. So let me pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for our little ones and for their laughter, for their joy, and also, Lord, today as we recognize the men and women who've made a sacrifice here, say how thankful we are for them and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So now, who's going to, who's never had it? Never had it. You've never had it, have you? Yes, he did. You've had it. 
But here, next week, y'all gonna be here next week? Yeah, all right, so, all right, you may give, I'll give it to your mom and dad, and then y'all can go to Children's Church. How many of y'all was tapping your foot? <laughs> you notice in your bulletin there's a time of recognition for our veterans. I have a video I want to play. And uh, just in case, if you can't see the words, I'll, I'll read the words later as we give thanks. But I want you to watch this video. And then uh, we'll have some more recognition after we do that. So uh, I think the TV is off, so let's cut it back on. And let's see what we got here. All right. Here we go. It's coming. All right. Come on. It's coming. Wake up. Wake up. All right, come on now. If I get on my knees, maybe it'll work. <laughs> come on. Here we go. All right. Correct password. <laughs> and it's my password. <laughs> All righty. Here we go.
every year on Veterans Sunday, we make sure we have the different logos for each military branch. And so as I call these names, if you served as a veteran in this branch, I'm going to ask you to come forward. So for those who are part of the Air Force, I encourage you to stand and come up front, please. Those who are in the Army, please come. Those who are in the Coast Guard, please come. The Marine Corps and the Navy. If you would just stand and face everyone up front so everyone can see you. John, go down a little bit. Um, for those who couldn't see all the words on the video, I want to I want to share these words one more time um, to each of you. In the video, it said, "You have sacrificed. You have endured. You have bravely carried the burden of our freedom. You bear physical scars and carry wounds we cannot see. You have protected our lives." by putting yours on the line. Today we pray the peace of God to rest on you. May you know his comfort and love. We pray that war will cease and God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We honor you today and ask God to bless you. May we never take your sacrifice for granted. Thank you, veterans. At this time I would like all the family members of those with this group or another family, if you have a family member that is a veteran, please stand. Because the reality is, it's not just these individuals. The family has a very important role. We have this coin that I want to give each of these individuals that simply says, thank you for your service. And so as you as a reminder, hey, saying thank you for your willingness to serve. Everybody, everybody get one, all right? Let, let us pray. Dear Lord, again, we just come to say thank you for the men and women who stand here before us and all of our service today, 8, 30, 9, and 11. Today we got to say thank you. And so please hear us as a congregation. Just ask that you bring these individuals your peace and comfort for their family, those who are serving now, those who are overseas for their family as well. Lord, we ask that you would just uh, let them know your comfort and know your peace and how grateful we are thankful are for their service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we have one more thank you? Over the past week and this week and next week, we have this theme around these images of stones. We're calling it the stones of stewardship. The stones of stewardship is based upon the symbolism and meaning of stones throughout the scripture. I share that because last Sunday was all Saint Sunday. We had candles we lit and we called the names of those members who've gone to be with the Lord. Our church members who died last year, we rung a bell, we lit a candle, and we talked about how they are now in, pro in the promised land of heaven. And the scripture that we used was around these 12 stones here, that when Joshua crossed over the river Jordan, that the Lord told them to go and get a stone, one for each tribe. So when the children asked, what do these stones, why do we have these stones, what is it about? It's a way to remember how God provided a way for them to cross over into the land of Canaan, the land of milk and honey. And so last Sunday around our All Saints Sunday, we also had time to remember 
and give thanks for their lives. And we said that not only were we thankful for their memories, but now that their legacy, their legacy lives through us, through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, we have to continue their legacy. And now today, if you notice on the table, we have some more stones. We have five smooth stones. And we'll talk a little bit more about why we have these five stones. But today... One of the things we're going to focus on is we want to give thanks to the men and women who have served our country. We want to say thank you. The second thing those stones are going to remind us is that anytime we go through something difficult, that the battle is not ours, that whatever trial, whatever you face, whatever your battle is right now, that the battle is the Lord's. And then finally, what it means to make provisions for the Lord, especially around when we talk about finances and then next Sunday we still have this same theme of the stones of stewardship it'll be our giving and holy communion Sunday we waited and didn't have holy communion last Sunday on the first Sunday we're going to have it on the third Sunday because as you come to receive holy communion you'll also bring your commitment cards as we think about what it means to make that financial commitment for next year's annual budget but also we'll be reminded that Jesus is the cornerstone. And there's also a, a gift um, that we'll have for you. So you'll come and you'll have Holy Communion. You'll bring your commitment card, your giving card, and then we have a gift to give you. Um, I don't like to keep surprises, but I'll tell you that it has to do something with a stone. <laughs> kind of fit the theme. There's something on the stone for you to remember, to, to remember as well. And because see, our key verse for all three weeks is 1 Peter 2 5. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So, on this Veterans Sunday, as we look at these five smooth stones, as a reminder to give thanks to all those men and women who are serving, who have served in our military that the battle is not ours, the battle is the Lord's, and what it means to make provisions for the Lord. So to do that, we're going to have to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now there's a, that chapter is a very lengthy chapter. If I was to start with the first verse and read all the way through, we'd probably be here till about 1220. So I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to highlight a few verses, and you may be thinking, I don't really know about 1 Samuel 17. If you've ever heard the story of David and Goliath, then you have a little idea of what this message is going to be about. So let's make sure we're on the same page. So at the beginning of 1 Samuel 17, it is time for a war. It's time for a battle between the Philistines in the Israelites and they've all they've gathered on their camps and they are ready to go to war but the Philistines have this one warrior named Goliath who's from Gath he's part of the Philistine camp they say he's about six cubits and one span so how tall of a man was he how big of a fellow are you well when you go back some say some theologians say he could have been nine foot nine some say he could have been as little as six foot nine. But when you think about who he's going to battle in a moment, this young boy, six nine or nine nine, is a pretty big guy, pretty big fella. And so as we see here, we see that every day as they gather around, the Philistines would say, This day I defy the army of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. You see, what they want to do was, instead of having just all of them one great battle, they decided, the Philistines said, we're going to bring our biggest, strongest guy we got, Goliath. And the Israelites, you bring your best warrior, and we'll just let them two go at it. And whoever wins will be victorious. No, one, no, one, no bloodshed for our elder, you know, the, the other folks, just one-on-one. -on -one. You bring your biggest guy, We'll bring our biggest guy. Well, David, young David, young shepherd boy David, had three brothers 
who are in this army. They're, they're, they're soldiers. And for 40 days, this is happening. The Philistines would come out every morning, every evening, and say, hey, come on. Let's do battle. Well, one day, David's father asked him to take some bread to his brothers to the camp. And so while he was carrying the bread, and when he got there, he heard Goliath say, is there anyone willing to challenge me? There's no one here who will fight me? And David looked at Saul and said, let no one lose heart on account of the Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. And Saul said, you're only a young man. You're too young. You're a youth. And that's when David reminded Saul, don't you know what I do for a living? I'm a young shepherd boy. I'm responsible for taking care of my father's sheep. And don't you know that while I'm taking care of the sheep, that bears and lions and tigers, oh my, well, no, that's, that's, from, that's from that movie. But that lions and bears come and take the sheep, and I go after them. And, and, and it says, look, with the Lord's help, listen to what it says, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of a bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. He's saying, look, Saul, I go against lions and bears. And as I go against them, the Lord has protected me, and he will protect me against this Philistine. So Saul takes off his tunic and his helmet and his shield and he puts everything on David and it's too big, he's too small, it's too heavy. So finally he said, I cannot go in these, he said, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of the shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine, approached Goliath. Listen to what he says to Goliath. He says, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it's not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you all of you into our hands. And then he went with his sling in hand, and the one stone threw it, struck him down, killed him, took his sword, cut his head off. Just exactly as he said he would. And so as we're looking at this sermon today, and also giving thanks for those men and women who've served, Again, I want to say thank you for your service. I also know that as, as serving in the military, you've seen battles that I cannot imagine. You've gone through battles that even TVs and movies cannot touch. I can't imagine what it's like to go and to put your life into that danger. Not just once, but many times. You have served and fought in many battles. But those battles are not also always physical. Those battles are emotional, mental, spiritual, and financial. And so for those who have served in the military, again, I want to continue with you for right now and say, look, remember what David told Goliath. He said, it's the Lord that saves. The battle is the Lord, it's not mine. So for those veterans here today, for those who've gone through and seen so much, please hear me say, I am very serious when we pray for you to have the peace of God to rest on you. It is also very important for you to know that we pray that you know his comfort and his love because I can't imagine what you've seen and what you witnessed. And now you have to come back and try to have what, what we consider a normal life. And so to come back and to raise a family and, and to work and, and knowing that, that for many, some are incapable to do that mentally, emotionally. It can be very difficult. And so it's important for you to know we're not only here saying thank you for your service, we're here to say that we can, any way that we can help, we're here to help in any way, spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally, whatever battle you may still have going through, please know that you have a church and a staff who wants to walk beside you. But more importantly, remember what David told the Philistine. This is the Lord's battle. So whatever you're going through, whatever trial, 
please know you're not alone. But then I also realize that many of you sitting here today have never stepped foot on a battleground, but you have your own battles in your home, with your family, with your job, with your finances, mental, emotional. You know, it's interesting because, you know, just recently have we really truly understand what it means to have emotional and mental battles. And if you have a family member, if you have a parent, if you have a child or a grandchild who has highs and lows emotionally, it's very serious. And it's a very big challenge. And so one of the things that I want you to hear me say is that as you go through those highs and lows, you're not alone. Again, the battle is the Lord. Just this past week, there was a 22-year-old who was in a bad car wreck. The doctors gave him a 1% chance of survival. Physically, he's fine, but, but the brain is just because of the, it was, he was shaking so much. They're slowly taking him off life support. Some of you know that the Ferguson family, we've been praying for Sam. His mother and father have scripture in the room. They're playing Christian music. She, they are not giving up. Now, that is a battle like no battle. That she's praying that the Lord would heal her son, restore him to health. And so there's things that we're all going through. Last Sunday in the very back row, about third row from the back, we had a man in the 830 service pass out. I thought he was dead. Last Sunday, you know, we were still trying to figure things out, so I didn't share as much details. But literally, we went back there. He had no pulse. We had to take him to the back. We was about to do CPR, and he came too. Ambulance came. He passed out once going here, passed out in the ambulance, and he passed out in the ER. And they told him that it was his test results came back, and he said he was just dehydrated. Let me tell you, that man has water wherever he goes right now. <laughs> and I saw him this week, and I couldn't keep my hands off of him. I was just hugging him and holding him. He was here this morning, and they don't sit over there anymore. They move to this side of the church. <laughs> And so, man, I was just, I was loving on it and hugging on Jim and Edna, and I was just like, man. Because, I mean, I'm literally standing right here, and we're lighting the candles and saying names, and, I mean, he just went. And I was like, man. And, but that's just, that's a, another battle. And you've got children and grandchildren who are going through, a, there, there's people in this room who have children who are dealing with all these battles, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, financial. And as a parent, you're trying to think, well, what do I do? How much do I involve? How much do I help? And there's limitations. And I think what, I'm, what I want you to hear me say is the best thing you can do is pray for your child, pray for your children, pray for your grandchildren, and realize that the battle is the Lord. The whole, think about it. You're having this young boy defeating this giant. What that means for us is that whatever you're going through, that only the Lord can intervene. And that's why we're praying for Sam, that we're just saying, Lord, as we said last night, show up and show out. Well, I mean, we need a miracle. They need a miracle. And so whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, know that the only way that there can be healing in your relationship with your family is, is know that the Lord will fight your battle. Just as he was with David, he will be with you. Whatever you're going through, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, know that just as he was with David, I mean, think about it. There's no way that this young man should be able to defeat this giant. And whatever you're facing right now, you, you feel like you're going through something just as, as much as hard, difficult as David was. But his confidence, that's, that's what I love about the more than anything else. I mean, listen to what he said. He said, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. That needs to be your prayer. Whatever your battle is, say, I come in the name of the Lord Almighty for healing, for restoration, for whatever you're going through. Get, turn it over to the Lord. Let Him win your battle because when you try to defeat the battle on your own, we're not strong enough, we're not smart enough, we can't do it on our own. Only the Lord can defeat your battle. And then we read on to first verse 40 where it says, Then he took his staff in his hand. He chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in his pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistines. So 
I've read this my whole life, and it always bothered me. Why did he just take one? Why five smooth stones? What's the reason? Was he worried that he was going to miss him? No. He wasn't worried about it. He knew that the Lord was going to feed him. He knew that when he threw this, he could have, the giant could have been there, he could have thrown it that way. And that rock somehow would have come around and hit him right in the head. Because the Lord was going to take care of it. So why the other four? Well, I believe the other four was a provision to be ready. See, what a lot of people don't realize is Goliath had four other brothers. And they were just as big as he was. I believe David let these other four stones to be ready if one or more of his brothers was to avenge his brother's death. I think he wanted to be ready. You know, and you heard me say at the very beginning of the day, this is about stones of stewardship. I think that when it comes to stewardship, we need to also be ready to make financial provisions. We need to be ready financially for what the Lord brings for us as a church. That means, are we ready? I don't mean like the roof falls. It's funny, when you think about provisions, you think about when things go wrong. Man, I'm thinking about how we can bless someone, how God can use this church to reach others for Christ. I'm talking about using financial provisions to lead people to Christ, to send children to camps, youth to camps, to help those in our community who need help with their rent and pay their bills, how we can have financial provisions to be there to help others. See, this past Friday, we mailed, if you're on our mailing list, we mailed you a letter explains this whole theme. We, we included a giving card. You can return it in person or you can mail it back. We even included a little gift. In the letter, there's a pie chart. shows where all the money is going. And we've even, we've even given you the number for next year's budget. For 2022, our goal is $761,432. Now, as a church, they may, that may seem that we have these two financial Goliaths. What do I mean? Well, first of all, I don't, I don't see it as a problem at all. Some may think our first financial giant is the debt on that fellowship hall. When we started that second campaign back in September, when we first did it four years ago, we owed $1.2 million. Now we have it down to $865,000. And then people are thinking, well, we've got that. And then we have this next year budget of seven sixty one. But I don't see that as a giant or a Goliath. See, when it comes to the finances, I had the same faith and trust as David did when he faced his Goliath. The Lord has blessed this church. We've gone through so much through COVID. I mean, it's amazing. And you can ask anyone on our finance committee. I mean, people prior to for COVID, people have been given to the church. We keep her, what is it, 23, 25% of, of cash in our checking. So when things come, and that doesn't mean we meet every, every Sunday of every month. It's right on target. But we haven't missed a, a bill. We haven't missed blessing someone. I mean, because we've had good stewards in the past, we pray we'll continue to be good stewards. We have individuals who are willing to give their time, their talent, and their time. Last week when we honored those who have gone to be with the Lord, we said we're gonna, their legacy is going to live through us through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. That's how their legacy lives through us. There's many ways we give. You, in a moment, you're going to have a chance to give weekly or monthly through an offering. Some give online, and now we have the capability to give through even stocks as a church. Everything that we have is a blessing from the Lord. I truly believe that when we all bring our best, especially when we bring our finances, God will honor that and bless that. So you can learn a lot about a person where they spend their time and where they spend their money. So what can be said about you? where you spend your time, and where you spend your money. As we come to an end today, this is what I want you to think about. For some who are going through some battles, physical, financial, emotional, mental, spiritual, whatever battle you're going through, remember that the Lord was with David, and he'll be with you. And I'll be glad to pray with you in a moment at this altar. But also, I want you to be thinking about these provisions as as David was smart enough to have four more stones as provisions, I want you to be praying. Next week when you come, I want you to be ready to make that commitment for 2022. Be praying about that financial commitment for next year as we use these provisions, not to fix a roof or to replace the AC unit, but how God can use us to help those in our community, in our church, so we can help them 
and be a blessing and tell folks about Christ. Charlene's going to play for us. This is our time of reflection. I want you to reflect about what you heard. If you need me to pray with you or for you, I'll be glad to have the time here at the altar. But think about, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart as what you heard about today. Use this time to reflect or come to the altar, and I'll be glad to pray with you or for you. We thank you for the story of David and how you provided for him and being with him through that battle. Lord, I pray for each of us as we go through things within our lives. And the reality is not everybody knows our struggles, but you know what we're going through. I pray for those names of families we've mentioned. Continue to be with those individuals and those families and help us to be good stewards financially and make provisions so we can bless others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we have our stewardship, before we have our offering, uh, today we're going to have someone come and give us a stewardship moment. I'm going to invite Jeff Spivey. He's the chair of our uh, finance committee. One of the things that we do every, every year, we have someone come and share. Normally we have someone share all three Sundays, but we thought, man, Jeff, he can just do it one and done. I mean, he's, he's that good. So he's going to come and share with us at this time. Jeff Spivey. Thank you, Keith, for the introduction. For some of you, this is the third time you get to hear this. And for those of you that do know me, I do not clap in church, nor do I smile very much. But after Keith talked about the Stones of Stewardship campaign and said, why did David carry five stones? The gentleman in front of me <laughs> was said he might miss. <laughs> And I don't know if anybody in the, uh, in the choir saw me bent over in the pew laughing, but my son and daughter and I, we were all laughing uncontrollably. So I'm here to talk to you about finances. So we do, we do not want to miss, okay? So I'm going to bring into my talk what the gentleman said in front of me, which is just beautiful. So our general budget will cover a number of things, just like your household budget, utilities, insurance, care of property, all the things you do at home will need to be here at church. So we're going to need you as Keith talks about this campaign, the stewardship campaign. What's it going to allow us to do if you turn in a commitment card? Well, it allows us to put those provisions in our pocket. We put those extra stones in case we do miss, in case we do have an air conditioner go out, in case we do have a family that needs to be fed, to clothe, to be housed. So when you commit to us on these cards, it's going to give us an indication of the strength of the church. I would also like to say, Jana Flurry said I did not smile earlier, so I'm trying to smile as well. <laughs> so your, your commitment cards will allow us to gauge the strength of the church. It will allow us to plan this budget wisely and properly. And it will allow us to live within our means. This church is in a strong financial position because we have lived within our means look around, people that aren't here anymore, the names on windows, they committed to this church, they committed to this community and this, and this family of Christ. What we're hoping for is 70% of our general budget pledged, so when Keith put out that number of 761000 no, $761,032.04, what is 70% of that? Well, that's 533000 whatever. Okay, we can get down to the pennies if you want to, but what 70% tells us is 
that allows us to have those provisions. That allows us, if we do miss, we have something left. That allows us to care for the church, for the community, for the state, for our children. So, I promise to use your gifts wisely. The finance, the finance committee will use your gifts wisely. 70% is what we're looking for. If we come in under that, we will adjust the budget accordingly. We will let you know that. Here's what I ask of you. Ask for you play, to pray on your pledges and bring those cards on the 21st and submit them as Keith asked us to submit them. I would like to read from Mark 12, 41 through 44. Those of you who have heard me read this before today, I'm still going to read it again. Because we always get the question, I can only give this much. That's not part of it. Mark 12, 41 through 44. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the multitude putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than those who, who are contributing to the treasury. For all, for they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, her whole living. The giving that we want comes from the heart that will show itself no matter that financial amount. Give from the heart, I say. We want to stay true to the gospel of Christ and those that came before us. Thank you. If the ushers would come forward, we'll continue to honor God through a, a time of offering and bringing our tithes. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we worship many ways today, music, message, children's ministry box, and now we worship and honor you through the giving of our tithes. We pray a special blessing upon this gift and the giver and their families. Everything that we collect here today is used, is helped to use your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
worship with our affirmation of faith can be found on number 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, if this is your first time, we encourage you to come to the Welcome Center so you can get a free gift, and uh, thank you for coming. Let me pray for us. Dear Lord, thank you for what we've seen today as we honor those who have served our country, continue to be with them and their family. Allow us to remember that the battle is yours. Whatever we're going through, you can and will defeat it. And Lord, we want to be good stewards of the provisions financially as well. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.